Hello. Some of you, my readers um, and listeners, know that I like uh, Mother Jones. It's a good magazine that summarizes a lot of things that are left out of your news on a regular basis, or they put together information that you've maybe not heard, uh, but should be in the news. So let's go ahead and um, read the main story uh, from last summer, or this summer, excuse me, out front. And they were putting this magazine out as the coronavirus hit. So um, this is a little dated, but the article on Point of No Return uh, describes the horrible, unfair judge um, and, and decision-making process in the, on the immigration courts here in the United States. Now, probably our whole court system is like this right now. Um, we stopped being one of the better, uh, more fair and just and, and efficient courts in the world to one of the poorest because we don't fund our courts right and we don't um, for uh, try to help people improve their lives and as as we should be doing. It's constitutional uh, to treat people right and it's also a humane uh, way to behave, to treat people right. Let me talk about the courts. Is uh, they're called M M P M P P S Migrant Protection Protocol Courts, and they're completely kangaroo. And I I feel like uh, I'm reading something so Kafka s it's, it's insane. San Diego Immigrant Court Courtroom Number Two. Judge Lee. O'Connor has been in his court for all of two minutes before a look of annoyance washes over his face. Eleven children and six adults, all from Central America, are all in immigration court for the first time, sit on the wooden benches before him. They've been awake since well before dawn, so they could line up at the U.S.-Mexican border to board buses to downtown San Diego. Bulletproof vested uh, federal agents are by their side. Yeah, great look, America. We want to do better. Like the dozens of families jam-packed in the lobby and six other courtrooms in this building, they've been waiting out their asylum cases in Mexico, as required by the Trump administration's controversial migrant protection protocols, MPP, also known as Remain in Mexico Forever protocol. A uh, O'Connor's docket is full of MPP cases today, like every day. The policy has further clogged up the already backlogged immigration court system, stranding judges in a bureaucratic morass and leaving asylum seekers with little hope for resolution anytime soon. San Diego has one of the biggest MPP courts due to its proximity to Tijuana, where tens of thousands of asylum seekers have been living in shelters and tent cities. I was present for the uh, very first MPP hearing in San Diego in March 2019 and, I, and saw how confused and frustrated all sides were that the Department of Homeland Security, which is the biggest part of the budget in the U.S., um, didn't seem to have a plan for handling these cases. Okay, the plan is evidently not to let anybody through, that's it. When I uh, came back a year uh, after later this year in January, little had changed. Even so, it was stunning to see how fed up judges like O'Connor were and how much their hands were tied by mid-March as the coronavirus was spreadily, spreading rapidly. The courts remained open and, and were still packed. That didn't always be the case over the last few months, but uh, the kangaroo court goes on. O'Connor uh, leans forward to adjust his microphone, rubs his forehead, and starts the group uh, removal hearing for the 17 people in front of him. An interpreter asked the adults concerned, understand, see, si, they replied nervously from the back of the courtroom. O'Connor, who, who was appointed to the bench in 2010, is known for being tough. Between 2014 and 2019, he denied 96 percent of the silent cases before him. 96 percent? That means only 4 percent of people got through his court? Sounds like a jailer to me. O'Connor, who um, explains to the migrants that they have the right to an attorney, although one will not be provided. Kangaroo court. Uh, there are no public defenders in immigration court. The moms sitting in front of me have their eyes locked on the interpreter trying to absorb every bit of information. Their kids do their best to sit quietly. As he thumbs through the case files, 
O'Connor grows increasingly frustrated. None of them has an address listed on any official forum. The government isn't even bothering to do this, he grumbles. I've seen them do this in 2,000 cases since May. So he's finally pointing the finger at the government for the delay. He looks up at the DHS attorney with a stern expression, but she continues shuffling paperwork at her desk. It's her job to mismanage the whole affair. Are you catching this, America? O'Connor tells the group they have to file a change of address for form within a week, but it's unclear how they could follow his exacting instructions without the help of an attorney. He points out other mistakes in the paperwork filed by DHS and wraps up the hearing after about 45 minutes. Let's see, how many mistakes do they want to put before the judge? And the judge says, oh, come back in five weeks, right? O'Connor schedules the group's next hearing, yeah, in five weeks at 8.30 a.m. That will mean showing up at the San Isidro, Isidro border of, uh, port of entry at 4.30 in the morning. If they miss their court date, he says they'll be barred from entering the United States for 10 years. What kind of crime is this? They're not even... Do you understand, he asked. The group responds with a hesitant C. The Trump administration designed and to prevent migrants from receiving asylum and discourage others from even seeking it in the first place. First implemented in San Diego in January 2019, the policy has forced as many as 62,000 people back to dangerous Mexican cities where immigrants are routinely preyed upon. Their cases have been added to the backlog of more than 1 million cases juggled by the nation's approximately 400 immigration judges. Let's talk about bad funding, America. You're supposed to be a rich country. Ashley Tabador, <clears throat> president of the National Association of Immigration Judges, says MPP has left judges like her powerless while speeding up the process of dehumanizing the individuals who are before the court and deterring uh, anyone from the right to seek protection. DHS, she says, has set up a situation where they're physically, logistically, and systematically creating all the obstacles and holding all the cards. All this while the Department of Justice is trying to decertify the judge's very own union for claiming its members are managers and no longer eligible for union membership. Immigration attorneys in San Diego, El Paso, and San Antonio have told me that they are disturbed by the courtroom disarray. Phones go unanswered, mail sits unopened, filings languish unprocessed. Some of their clients are showing up at the border in the middle of the night only to find that their cases have been rescheduled. Central Americans who speak indigenous languages are asked to navigate court proceedings with Spanish interpreters. As another lawyer put it, the whole thing is a F disaster that is designed to fail. Yeah, it seems pretty obvious that's what they're doing with our tax dollars. Courtroom number four. Down the hall, I find a Honduran woman I'll call Mary. She just recently got an attorney, so Judge Philip Law agrees to reschedule her hearings, which means she has to head back to Tijuana for another week. Stephanie Bloomberg, a lawyer with Jewish Family Services of San Diego who is working Mary's case pro bono, tells Law that her client is afraid to return to Mexico. I don't want to go back to Mexico. It's terrible, Mary says in Spanish. I have no jurisdiction over that, law says. That's between you and the Department of Homeland Security. What can one foreigner at the border do to Homeland Security? Is the judge bananas? The judge turns to the DHS attorney who says he'll flag the case and pass it along. Okay, I don't know what flag the case means, but they better uh, do something. Um, before I go further, I'll show you a picture of the border. Yeah, they're letting a handful of people across the day. Um, the statistics show the immigration court backlog. Okay, see the red? That's what's happened in the last couple of years. It's gone up from this level to hundreds of millions, I mean, hundreds of uh, millions, from thousands to millions. It was only in, before Trump took office, there was most 500,000 people. Only. 500,000, okay? And then uh, Trump came in at more than double, and now we're well over a million. Um, these poor people, uh, some of them actually 
our immigrants for safety. Uh, look what happens to this poor Mary. Back in the waiting room, Mary tells me that she and her five-year-old son crossed the border in Texas and asked for asylum. They were to detain for two days and then flown to San Diego, where she was given a court date and released in Tijuana. She didn't know anyone and barely knew where she was. Two days later, she was raped. This is what America's doing to people at the border. I thought about suicide, she whispers. I carried my son and thought about jumping off a bridge. Instead, she ended up walking for a long time, not knowing where, what to do or what would happen to them because they didn't have a safe place to go. I haven't talked to my family back home. It's so embarrassing because of the dream I had coming here. And now look, she says, we're discriminated against in Mexico. People make fun of us the way we talk. Her son was already shy, but has become quieter and more distrusting. Uh, in the past year, Human Rights First cracked, uh, tracked more than 1,000 public reports of torture, kidnapping, rape, and murder of asylum seekers sent back to Mexico. A lawsuit brought by the American Civil Liberties Union and other civil rights groups is challenging MPP um, on the grounds that it violates the Immigration and Nationality Act as well as international human rights laws which require the United States to return back, return people to places where they face danger. A few days later, Bloomberg, the attorney on Mary's case, tells me in an email that border officials sent her back to Tijuana that night. Courtroom 1. I don't want any more court. A woman from Guatemala pleads just bef before lunchtime. No more hearings, please. This woman has been to court multiple times since mid-2019. That means over a year and... Uh, so, uh, going back and forth to Mexico and San Diego. No matter how hard she tried, she can't find a lawyer, she tells Judge Scott Simpson. She's had enough. We've reached a fork in the road, ma'am, he says in a warm, calm tone. You either ask for more time for an attorney to help you or you represent yourself. It's been almost a year. I don't want to continue the case. I want to leave it as is, she tells him. After more explanation from the judge, the woman says she'd like to represent herself today so that decisions can be made. Simpson asks what she would like to do next, and the woman says, I want to end it. After hearing the Guatemalan woman ask for the case to be closed multiple times, Simpson takes a deep breath, clasps her hand, his hands, and says there are four options, withdrawal, administrative close, dismissal, or termination. He explains each one, and after 10 minutes, the woman asks for her case to be closed. The DHS attorney denies that request. Simpson can't do anything about it. The judge tells the woman that because DHS filed paperwork on her case that day, and because it's only in English, he's going to give her time to review it. Because as a judge, I don't think it would be fair for you to go forward without the opportunity to object to that. He scheduled her back in a month. MPP is not a program I created, he says. That decision was made by someone else. Uh, yeah, that's what happened to Hitler's judges, too. They all said they didn't create the system and couldn't control it. Same thing for the Homeland Security under um, the uh, Nazis. Okay? They all said they were doing the same thing. Uh, now, I don't just want... Um, Homeland Security and judges to do what's right. I want uh, also policemen to do what's right. See the rioting we're facing in America right now due to continued uh, violence against minorities. I want the uh, citizens to do what's right by electing officials that uh, love people instead of hate people. And uh, I want to make this place better. If you need to put uh, Donald Trump in jail to do so, it would be helpful. And other war criminals too, I don't know. Uh, Maybe George W. Bush. Uh, maybe I. I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of them out there. Uh, please uh, get this bar guy out of the attorney generalship and uh, change the the, the the government. This 2020 people, you need to organize, get out, and vote, and save these people. We should not have 
uh, America's name further dragged into mud and blood and slime as has been happening over the last decades. Take care. This is the Kevin Soda Channel.